here we are, let's get on one accord. Leave all your problems on the outside to be consumed by the Holy Ghost fire. Open up your mouth and make the name of Jesus higher. Say, are you ready for your blessing? Are you ready for your miracle, for the change that comes from the enemy? Utterly destroyed when the praise is reached. Oh, say, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He's exalted forever, so let the praise begin. Lord, I love you. No one above you. Put your hands together and... I know it might be tough to get your praise on The trials of life have messing with you all week long If you don't have a reason to praise them, let me give you one He gave you a brand new mercy with the rising of the sunset Are you ready for your miracle? The chains that come from the enemy Utterly destroyed when the praise is ringing yeah, yeah. Hallelujah, thank you Jesus He's exalted forever so let the praise begin Lord I love you, no one above you Put your hands together Raise up, raise up, send the praise up. Raise up, send the praise up. Raise up, raise up. Raise up, send the praise up. Raise up, raise up, send the praise up. Raise up, send the praise up. Raise up, raise up, send the praise up. I'm going to ask, for those of you who can stand, stand please. Raise up, send the praise up, raise up, raise up. Raise up. Raise up. Raise up. Send the praise up, raise up, raise up, send the praise up, raise up. Okay, hear this now. It's in your praise, it's in your praise, it's in your praise, it's in your praise. It's in your praise, it's in your praise, it's in your praise. It's in your praise, it's in your praise, it's in your praise. It's in your praise, it's in your praise, it's in your praise. It's in your praise, it's in your praise, it's in your praise. He's here, 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 he's here right now, he's here right now, he's here right now. He's 
You didn't know that when you come to Open Arms United Church of Christ, you're going to have to work out. She got us standing up and clapping. That's an aerobic activity. This morning before Vicki does the welcome and our announcements, the, there's a young lady that used to be here all the time, off and on, I guess. Um, and she would always bring a young man with her. Well, Bud and Pat Spooner, you know, they went home quite a while ago. But what she did before she went home was she implemented a legacy for her name to continue even though she went home. She left some money and she wanted to start a mentoring program in our church. And so we moved here and started to pray for someone to come that we can utilize those funds to help. And I wrote a contract and a timesheet and all that kind of stuff, and we had a young man lined up, but he never showed. He would show here and there, and Jim, I told him, um, if you're late for work, there's some consequences. If you don't show up, there's some consequences. Because where I'm from, we work hard. And so anyway, he never, it never came to pass. But God had a ram in the bush in the form of his younger brother. And so we've been talking to this young man over a period of time. And I told him, I said, now, if you want to take part in this professional development program, then be at church today. Now, I'm going to give you a 15-minute window because you never know what we'll go through coming here. This morning, he came in. He put his uniform on his open arms United Church of Christ shirt. I went through my check. I said, okay, pull your pants up. You're looking good. Okay, good, 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 good. Okay. Are we good? We good? We good? Good, 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 good. And he'll sign the contract after worship and get his time sheet. And I told him, me and Vicky talked to him last week, and we say, you show up today and you get paid today. And once a month, he has to sit down with me to do a professional development program which would be working on transition, working on how to get a job, working on how to do a handshake, working on whatever, how to dress, how to hold yourself, how to talk, hold your head up. And so I wanted to bring him up here this morning, and I told him earlier so he wouldn't be embarrassed, to introduce you to Mr. Chris Grimes. How old are you? 18. So he would show up from time to time. After, this is Sister Grimes' grandson. So he would show up from time to time, and I would say, I got some donuts back there. Right? Yeah. And then here we are today. Because I believe, and you believe, that we should sow into the younger generation. So that when I'm dead and gone, he can look back with all of us and say, somebody was there for me. And so now you're going to be there for somebody else. And so he's going to show up every Sunday, suffer through my sermons, <laughs> help us unpack and pack and all this kind of stuff. And this morning he said, now where this card go? It was around the thing. And I'm like, yes. Okay. So after worship, he's going to be working and helping us, right? And then we're going to pay him. Now, I hope to see him next week because don't just get one paycheck and leave. You got to come back. <laughs> All right. So let's give him a big old hand clap. <laughs> Vicki. Okay. Oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> well, again, good morning, everyone. We're really glad you're here. So yesterday, for those who knew Ola Bear, it was her uh, celebration of life. And I was told that it was a lovely and inspiring time to share her life and remember her incredible faith. We want to thank Pastor Williams, Kruger, and Royster for making her homecoming such a special time 
for everyone that was there. And also the lilies that are right there, those are from her service. So we have a little bit of olive here with us today. And also um, Gail brought back some prayer cards from the service. So if you were unable to attend and would like one, there's some sitting there on the table. Okay. So also, no, that was it on that one. Okay, the other announcements. I have a need one spot for August for youth time for next week. So I get that filled and then next week y'all can sign up for September. So I'm real excited about that. And the other announcements are on the 20th, which is next Saturday, we will have Doris Hageman's Celebration of Life right here at 10 o'clock. And then on the 21st, the next Sunday, we will have our congregational vision meeting just to go over what's going on in the church, anything that anybody wants to ask about or like to see done or whatever, that's the time that we can do all that. Also, our mission for this month is the Montgomery County Food Bank. So they are really experiencing a lot of lows in their food bank. Their um, community is really growing, but they said they have a lot of people that still can't um, provide for their family like they would want to. So any help we can give them would be greatly appreciated. So we do have some friends to pray for. We have Matt, Kevin, Jean, and I just found out that um, Jean had a little fall this past week and hurt her knee. So she's gonna be out for a little bit. So we already have her on our prayer list. And I told Kenneth that if we're praying for you, it doesn't mean you can go and just do wild things and fall. So anyway, we wanna lift her up extra special these weeks to heal fast. And we also have Ray and Mary and Reverend Ron, Reuben, Jamie, Tammy, Dalton, Christy, Karen and Scott, Dean, Stephanie, and of course we have the people of Ukraine. That's our sunflower that's sitting right here behind me. Just always keep on our mind that we need to keep praying for that country. And I think that's all we have for now so we can lift our hearts and our minds to worship as we go to another song.
morning, everyone. Our scriptures this morning are Hebrews chapter 11, verse 29 through chapter 12, verse 2. It is by faith that the people of Israel went right through the Red Sea as though they were on dry land. But when the Egyptians followed, they were all drowned. It was by my faith that the people of Israel marched around Jericho seven days and the walls came crashing down. It was by my faith that Rahabah, the prostitute, did not die with all the others in the city who refused to obey God, for she had given a friendly welcome to the spies. Well now, much more, how much more do I need to say? It would take too long to recount the stories of the faith of Gideon, Barak, Simon, Tepetheth, David, Samuel, and all the prophets. By the faith of these people, overwhelmed kingdoms ruled with justice and received what God had promised them. They shut the mouths of lions, quenched the flames of fires, and escaped death by the edge of a sword. Their weakness was turned to strength. They became strong in battle and put whole armies to fight. Women received their loved ones back again from the dead. But others trusted God, were tortured, and refused to die rather than run, turn from God and be free. They placed their hopes in the resurrection to a better life. Some were mocked, some were, were backs were cut with, with whips, others chained in dungeons, some died by stoning, and some were sawed in half, and others were killed with swords. Some went about <clears throat> in sheepskin and goats, hungry, oppressed, and mistreated. They were too good for this world. They wandered all over the deserts and mountains, hiding in caves and holes in the ground. All of these people were mentioned, receiving God's approval became of their, because of their faith. Yet none of them received all of what God had promised. For God formed more better things in mind for us <clears throat> that would also benefit them, for they can't receive the prize at the end of the race until they finish the race. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such huge crowds and witnesses of life and faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that also hinders our progress. And let us run to the <clears throat> endangers, the race that God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, whom our faith depends to, from the start to the finish. He is willing to die a shameful death on the cross because of the joy he knew that would be his afterwards. Now he has scarred, I'm sorry, now he is seated on the place of <clears throat> the highest honor beside God, throne in heaven. Would you join me in prayer? Lord Jesus, we thank you for loving us despite of our many stumbles and failings. Please forgive us our missteps and guide us as we seek to serve you wholeheartedly. Lord, please help us to be faithful followers of Christ. Help us to never be ashamed to live our lives according to your commandments. Please hold us more into your likeness every day. Thank you for your love and faithfulness to us. And in Jesus' name we all say, Amen. Before we do our missing of the backpack this morning, Gail had something she wanted to say in regards to that before we bless. I was thinking about the things that I would like to share with my grandchildren or my great-grandchildren or children anywhere. And so I have messages for all those children. And my messages are up here, and I just want to share 
our messages to all children. Stay positive. Never give up. Yes, you can. Grow. Be kind. Hang in there. You got this. Help others. Dream big. Stop bullying. And learn. And we hope that our children will go back to school or uh, wherever they spend their time. And these will be messages that they will carry with them. Thank you. I am passionate about education. I'm passionate about dreaming big. I'm extremely passionate about bullying, where somebody thinks that just because they look a certain way, they can bully somebody else. All those things, Gail, that you have on that fabric are important. Because in our children, there are educators here, you never know what that child will become if that child is nurtured. And the church is a nurturing ground. The pastor at the funeral yesterday talked about the church he pastored for 52 years and how he watched children come through that church. And as he was giving the eulogy, he didn't have the energy that he had 52 years before. And another older preacher, about the same age, sitting right next to him in my culture, Rev, said, come on, man, pull it, means set us on fire. But he set me on fire yesterday with his humility, with his words about legacy. And so with our young people this morning, it's more than just blessing some material. This goes away. It gets lost. It gets wet. It gets tattered. And we may need a new one by the end of the year because we threw it down when the lunch bell rang because we had to go eat hot dogs that day with french fries because it's Friday. Or maybe y'all don't do that now. Maybe we left it in the rain because somebody was talking to us on our phone and we couldn't help but get back to them or whatever we do. So the day before I asked, our young people to come up. We're not blessing backpacks. We're blessing human beings. That within that human being, is a, that, that's a soul with a backpack, <laughs> not a backpack with a soul. And so if our children will go to school and know that they are a soul, it changes how you walk. When you know that you are a divine creation, it changes how you see yourself, and instead of being a small thinker, you do like Joseph. You think big, and then you flaunt yourself in your robe of many colors. And you're going to have some haters. I got one or two, but I've been around a while. God has a way of taking your haters and flicking them away. Somewhere I read, he'll make your enemies your footstool. where you will now sit back in mama and daddy house or wherever and take your feet and prop them up on your footstool that bullied you while you're leaning back, looking at TV, drinking hot, drinking cold tea and eating a sandwich. I've placed my feet on some footstools in my past. Those that said I wouldn't make it beyond the block didn't realize that one day I'd walk through D DTS and ETS. So, our young people, if you would, can you come up? Is it okay? Or I'll come to you if you don't feel comfortable. I don't want to make you just because I'm the, don't, those who are in school. Oh, you're in school. Well, come on in. <laughs> How old are you, Susie? <laughs> no, you know, you're, I looked at her, huh? So you got, you, you're fine. Su Susie, you guys don't know Susie. 
Susie lives around the corner somewhere over here. She's friends with my sons and my daughters. And we sort of, I told her one day, I said, we're going to adopt you. Because she go to the gym and lifting all that heavy weight and all that stuff. And then she'll be doing her schoolwork and all that and talking to them and drinking Starbucks, getting all hyped up so she can deadlift. I mean, I'm so glad they invited Susie because we, we adopt everybody. Okay? So anyway, Susie's 20, what? 22. So we're going to stand and we're going to bless. You can stand here, Susie. And so what we'll do is each individual will go to you and we'll hold your hand like this. And we'll say, I'll pray for you. And we'll say, Lord, I ask for you to be with Laura throughout the school year, right? Did I mess up? Lori, Laura, Laura, Laura? I said, Lord, be with Laura. This is impromptu. We didn't practice. I'm okay. It's Laura, right? It was Laura last week. And I'm asking God to bless you throughout this year with good grace. And even if you get a bad one, it's a learning experience. So don't do like it and want to quit school. So we're saying, Lord, be with you, right? So we're blessing you. <laughs> we're blessing Julia. I don't know if you guys have noticed Julia. The first day I met Julia, she drew me a picture because I thought she was ignoring me. But she was drawing a picture. And we put that picture on our Instagram page. And she said on the thing, I said something about having doubts. And she wrote that on that thing. And I remember asking her in front of Adam, I said, I hope you guys come back. And she looked at me and said, we're coming back. <laughs> and they said, well, we got a mama and we got <laughs> a, another sister. I said, okay, okay. Because I'm always on pins and needles when new people come. Because I want to make sure the house is clean when you show up. It was good. So, Lord, we thank you for Julia. We thank you for her gifting. We thank you for her spirit. We thank you for her honesty with herself. We thank you for all of that. And we ask for you to be with her, to guide her, to keep her, to protect her, and to strengthen her, and to have her walk with her head high this year. And if anybody comes at her sideways, she's going to step the other way and continue walking towards her goals. Amen? And when she sings in the choir, sing loud. Amen. Blessing. Oh, Lord. This one here. <laughs> First day I met her, she would test the limits of my sanctification. <laughs> Lord Jesus. <laughs> but she has come a long way. She, when I went to her family's memorial service yesterday, if I didn't know my name, I knew it after I left the service. Because she introduced me. She said, Pastor Jewel, Pastor Jewel, Pastor Jewel, this is my pastor. And I was 10 feet tall and bulletproof. Because how old are you? 12. When I was 12, I was trying to hide from going to church. And you're introducing me when I came in. Such a blessing. We watched Miss Olive Bear go home as a UCC, and we see the birth of another UCC. So the legacy continues. So we say thank God for you. We pray for you. We pray for you too. To not make me laugh, we pray for you to have an awesome year, and we pray for you to hang around here a long time to help us and to be a part of this wonderful family. Can you do that? Amen. Thank you. Susie, you're young. You're, uh, you could be one of my children, but I'm glad that my children are in your life and that you're in your life. They're you're in their life. I know you had a challenge lately with the loss of your mother, right? But you didn't, you lost your mother, but you gained a family. And we love you. And these people here are always like this. <laughs> they will love you. They will smother you. They will feed you. Especially Reverend Royster. <laughs> he likes Mexican food. So they will feed you, Miss Margaret will look at you and say, how can I get you to do some work? Okay? So we pray for you, we pray for your educational journey. What are you majoring in? Wow. History, but social work and public affairs.
for grad school. Amen. Amen. We have educators here. How many retired teachers we have here? A counselors and all that. Yeah. yeah. Pam's not here, right? And, and Greg, Irene, right? Educator. Retired. There you go. Educator here, Dr. Moore. Me. Right? And I'm all in a social thing, so let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for Susie. We thank you for her this morning, listening to that small voice that said, Go. And she showed up this morning. I pray for her, oh God. I pray for wounds to be healed. I pray for her mother to look down on her right now and say, baby, I'm proud of you. Keep moving. Honor my legacy. I pray for her brother, and I pray, God, that you just bless her beyond compare. And when she rocks across some dark days, let her be reminded that weeping men do it for a night, but joy will come and hold on to her faith, her family, her extended family, and Lord, let her know that we're here more than just with word. She knows that. We ask you this day to bless all of these students at various ages this year. In the name of your son, we pray and we say together, amen and amen. amen. Okay, I got to get a pastor hug. All right, give me one. Give me one. Okay. Boom. Therapeutic hugs. That's how we do it. Boom. <laughs> Boom. All right. Let's give them a hand, y'all. You may be seated. Now, next year, hopefully and prayerfully, we'll have a bigger line because we are moving in the right direction. We've come to our centering moment. And on yesterday, on Friday, of course, we took part in a memorial service for Miss Olive Bear with my brothers, my Eden brothers. And then after that, we went to Beaumont because we had to be a part of a funeral Saturday morning for my friend's mother, Sister Florida. As I'm taking my coat off to walk to the car to head home, another friend of mine said, hey, Jules, uh, did you hear about Mike? What did I say, no? Say, Mike's funeral is down the street. Mike is my age, was my age. Friend, played in the ditch together, basketball together. Well, he was at a stop or whatever, and somebody hit him from behind and ejected him from the car family, everything else. He's a family man. So I put my coat on and ran up the road to West Tabernacle Baptist Church and I walked in and paid my respects to the family and his family, my friends. So then we jump in the car and we're moving around. I said, let's go ride by through our city. I ride and I go to our little block and I see my friends there doing what we do, doing what they do, drinking. Well, where I'm from, Drinking and listening to the blues and, and talking about Jesus all kind of go together <laughs> on the hill. So I get out, I'm well groomed in my black suit, and I'm talking about the past. And we're talking about how we used to get whippings from his mama, grandma. And there's a lady sitting there, and she's in a wheelchair, about 40 ish. And so as we're getting ready, I'm getting ready to leave, I say, Look, y'all, y'all, my friends, I love you. I'll be praying for you. She said, can you pray for me? Because she was shot in the back. So she's in a wheelchair. So the scene, Roderick puts his beer down. The other brother puts his beer down. Shank is laid back like Shank does. This brother is kind of positioned this way. And we all put our head down. I grabbed her hand and we began to pray. And after we prayed, I said, man, I love y'all. And I jumped in the car, and we're riding back here. And it hit me. I told Kim, I say, that's what Jesus would do. Jesus wouldn't say, man, I'm not going to talk to you because you got a beer in your hand. Jesus would have said, look, just put it down so we can all pray together, but you can go back to your way. How do you think that affected that lady? That this pastor, preacher, whatever it may be she want to call me, from around the way to homeboy, whatever, stopped and prayed for me. Y'all, we got, we got a good thing here. And I represented you well yesterday. I tried. They said, where are you from? I said, I stood up in my black suit, my tan shirt, and my black and gold tie with my 
uncomfortable shoes on. <laughs> Long the road to other pastors and preachers, and I said, my name is Reverend Dr. Jules Williams, Jr. from Open Arms United Church of Christ, where I am blessed to be the pastor. And I sat down, because I had to be kind of baptist there for a little while. <laughs> Can't wear vans there. Anyway, but I want to share that with you to say there are some struggling people out there. And we have these moments of centering for all of us as a family, because you have your own struggles. Now, those of us that have children going back to school, that's one more struggle. Will my baby make it home? Will my baby be okay? So anyway, if you would, would you breathe in with me this morning and breathe out. Breathe in and breathe out. Let us pray. God, whose kingdom we are working every day to bring here through our love for one another, through our fighting for justice, through our speaking for those who have lost their voice. It's been silenced by the powerful. Your kingdom here, O oh God, so that we can be here to love those who have lost loved ones, to love those who are being mocked by society, to love those that no longer feel love for themselves. May we be this community that when somebody comes in and they may be dealing with difficulty, Lord, they knew that exactly for an hour and a half or so that they were in a safe, sacred space and they were blessed with love. Lord, we have our difficult days. We have our challenges. May they be health or financial or familial. But Lord, we know that if we stay connected to you, you are able to bring us over and through the valleys. As we continue to hope and to hustle our way to our blessing. Bless this wonderful community. Where no matter where we are or who we are, Lord, we are at home here. Nestled in your hand. Because, Lord, I, last I checked, we are all brothers. We're all sisters. We're all of the same kind. Yes. We are a family. So, Lord, bless this worship service this morning. Let your spirit be felt from hand to hand, from heart to heart, from eye to eye. Lord, be with us. Be with those who are broken and hurting. Look in on Frank this morning as he mourns the loss of his mother. Look in on Michael White's family this morning as his family mourns the loss of daddy and of husband and of son and of brother and of uncle. Look in on my friend this morning that we blessed her house on yesterday. Madeline Scott, oh God, continue to rain down your blessings on her and her pets. Lord, we love her. Continue to lift up Ron, Reverend Ron Kruger, as he continues to fight the good fight for his health and for his wife and his family. Bless Sue as she holds his hand and maybe says a silent prayer as she watches him deal with radiation treatments. We love him. Thank you for Chris this morning, for being in this place. And as I told him, oh God, it's more than money. It's about life. And let me and all of us be an example to him of what it means to be a child of God. Lord, we thank you. And be with Carol and the family of Olive as they continue to live out her legacy. Hear our prayer, O oh God. O oh, most compassionate life giver, may we honor and praise you. May we work with you to establish your new order of justice, peace, and love. Give us what we need for growth and help us through forgiving others to accept 
Strengthen us in the time of testing that we may resist all evil for all tenderness, strength, and love are yours now and forever. Amen and amen. Well, I asked Heather this morning if she would help me and she agreed. So she is going to give it to you and she is going to wait patiently for it to come back. so they can see us. All right, no, you gotta do it like this. You, you're, my shoulder's killing me this morning. That's why I can't do it. You ready? Here we go. Eternal God, we thank you this morning for those who gave. We thank you for those who had desire but weren't able to at this time. We ask for you to open up the windows of heaven and bless them, not only for themselves, but for others. Thank you for Heather this morning agreeing to help. In the name of your son, we pray and we say together, amen, amen. Thank you, baby. You're inside of us 
to you Abba without cause hunted me down like a bird they have silenced me in the pit and have placed a stone on me waters flowed over my head I said I am cut off I called on your name O Lord out of the lowest pit you have heard my voice do not hide your ear from my prayer for relief from my cry for help you drew near when I called on you. You said, do not fear. O oh Lord, you have pleaded my soul's cause. You have redeemed my life. We're concluding this morning the series, Lift Your Weary Head. In your program, there is a cute little image and a quick glance of the picture on your insert in your program reveals the image of a woman that some may say is an old woman. However, there's more than one person in the picture. There is a presence of a younger woman in the picture. The picture is about perspective. Perspective is defined as a particular way of considering something to think about it or how to see a problem. Perspective. A quick glance at problems can leave some of us engulfed in fear and depression because we just looked at the problem. While others may view the same issue differently because of a different perspective, there's more in the picture. Spiritual growth, the result of consuming soul food, shifts perspective. And it can change the way we see ourselves and our lives in the midst of a challenging situation. We all have challenging situations. Spiritual growth can take a person from lamenting to laughing as a result in a shift of how they view themselves a soul created in the image of God, and how they view their lives, that everything changes. Spiritual growth is an inner process of removing obstacles and habits that keep us stuck, even though we go to church every Sunday. It can keep us stuck with wrong concepts, erroneous beliefs, and ideas about ourselves and our lives. My life did not change until I changed my perspective about myself. It is a process of widening the horizons of our consciousness and understanding some inner truths about ourselves. I am somebody. I'm not Avenue F. 
I'm not the pear orchard in Beaumont. I'm not that person that others said that I am. I am a child of the living God. Spiritual growth is not trademarked by a particular religion. Spiritual growth is an inside job. It is the way, the truth, and the life. It is waking up from the ordinary to be extraordinary. Some people will try to keep their foot on our necks because the higher we shine, they want you to stay down low so that we can hang with them. No. You got to rise just like I'm rising. One thing I love about my friends at Beaumont, in Beaumont, that as I got higher in education, they didn't think that I was becoming better. They were pat me on the back and say, we saw it in you when you was in high school. But I didn't see it in myself. Matter of fact, one of my friends, he's my best friend and my children's godfather. He said, I believe in you. I support you. And I'm going to give you at that time $1,200 to get you to Eden so you can do your first residency. I believe in you. He wrote the check on the spot. Accepting the idea that we are a soul with a body, not a body with a soul. Spiritual growth is essential for a harmonious life. It's essential to be free of self-produced strain, fear, and anxiety. We are moving in a different direction because we see things differently now. I'm somebody. Spiritual growth is a process that can cause people to view God in life as themselves, which caused them to sing, he's an on-time God. Yes, he is. Now, some folk may look at us saying that, and it looks like we've lost our natural mind. Yes, some people need their brains washed. Oh, you missed that one. We need sometimes our brain washed away from fear, doubt, insecurity, all those things that keep us stuck and put some new stuff in there. Some new words in there so that when we do say he's an on-time God, we know why. He says he may not come when you want him, but he'll be there right on time. Some people stay stuck and grumpy. You don't know any grumpy people, do you? (laughs) Just grumpy. And a pain to be around because of an erroneous perspective. Yes, we all have challenges, but a shift in perspective leads to a different view of a situation. And they can remember when God showed up, and then we can lift our weary heads. Because the same unseen power that invigorated the broken body of the Christ is the same unseen power that invigorates the inner workings of those of us who are divine creations. I remember telling a young man, I say, you can stay stuck as, you, as long as you want to. And then one day, guess what's going to happen? You're going to die. And all you've done for this length of time is to stay stuck and fearful, but all you needed was a shift in your perspective. Away from looking at the problem and looking at the problem solver. Then you'll be able to stand up and be the person that you were from the womb. It's good to remind ourselves of specific moments when God was faithful to us in the past. Can you recall when God showed up in your life? I can recall when he showed up in mine. And because of that, we can be encouraged to trust that the divine will show up in the present and the future. How do I know? He was on time then, today, and I know he'll be on time tomorrow. Whether in a pit or a palace, God's presence changes everything. No matter if you're in Conroe and Tamino and Beaumont or whatever, God changes everything. Look at what we did yesterday because I don't do that by myself. We showed up to a lady that was in a wheelchair and open arms, prayed for her. In the text, Lamentations is a collection of Hebrew poems. It's a collection of Hebrew poems that focus on grief, pain, and suffering that came out of living in Jerusalem when it was besieged by the armies of Babylon. Babylon does still exist today. In modern time, turn on the TV, to which you will see the powerful exploit and destroy those viewed as powerless, causing grief, pain, and suffering. If you don't believe me, sit down and talk with the indigenous people that work this land. Sit down with the Africans that were brought here in chains. Sit down and look at the television and talk with a person from Ukraine 
who one day was going to work and living life and some megalomaniac from down the road decided, I want everything that you got. And if I got to kill your mama, your daddy, your baby, your brother, your sister, everybody else, I want it. Why? Babylon. But there's some folk fighting. Through lamentations, we can learn to see lament as an important spiritual exercise that brings our anger, our pain, and our confusion, trusting that God cares about us. Number one, the cause of lamenting. Verse 52 says, those who were enemies, my enemies, without cause. I didn't bother nobody. They started hunting me down like a bird. They tried to end my life in a pit and threw stones at me. The waters closed over my head, and I thought I was about to perish. I thought I was about to die. Jeremiah is telling his story. We all have a story where we've been in a pit before. And it seemed like the water was covering us, and we didn't know where to go and where to run. And all we could do sometimes was just sit still and let the tears run down our faces. The prophet's enemies had pursued him mercilessly through no fault of his own like hunters who track a bird. These enemies silenced the prophet by placing him in a pit and covering his mouth. He thought he would drown because of the water that engulfed him. The pit is a frequent symbol of the place of death. You know, people can be vicious. Am I putting you to sleep yet? People can be vicious. With their words and their actions causing hurt and pain, their harmful manipulative actions can leave scars that may never heal or may take years to heal. That's why as a pastor, I'm conscious of what I say. Because there's a certain way that things should be to be able to be a blessing to those that come in the room. And then sometimes I'll have to say something, and I want to make sure I'm not saying it in a way that's going to cut somebody in half. Because you know how passionate we can be sometimes. And I want to make sure that I don't scar anybody. And they go home and say, I'll never come back again because of that ignorant, educated fool that calls himself a pastor. I've seen some pastors that will cut people in half and put their suit on like they never hurt anybody. People who fail us can't prevent God's plan for us. Perhaps one of the most powerful stories is about Joseph. And Joseph's brothers threw him in the pit because of jealousy and hatred and rage and all of that. But guess what happens? Joseph still was blessed. Because no matter what you try to do to me, there is still a God bigger than you and bigger than me that will be with me to guide and keep protect me and carry me along the way. So yes, try to do what you do to me. And watch God bless me. It seems like the more folk try to hurt, the more God bless. I had to take my foot off my enemies, off my footstool one time because I was getting sleepy. Because God kept putting my feet on the back of my enemies. The brothers thought they could destroy the dream that God had given Joseph, but no one can shatter a dream whose source is of God. Flesh cannot stop progress. If you don't believe me, go back to the civil rights movement. Whether in a pit or palace, God's presence changes everything. The author of Lamentations 52 through 66 reminds us of God's goodness in the past so that we can put trust in God in the future, in the present, leading to our next thought, which is the power of calling on the one that resolves our lamenting. Sometimes if we call somebody else, they may be so negative that by the time we get off the phone talking to them, we want to jump off a bridge. Ugh. You're on the phone talking to them, and next thing you know, you say, yeah, I know. My life sucks, too. I don't even know why I called you. I got to go. And next thing you need, you're tired. And everything. The power of calling on the one that resolves our plot. Verse 55, I called on your name, Lord, from the depths of my pit. The lamenting had been interpreted, what, as a reflection of a personal experience? The remaining verses, is what, you can look at it now in verse 66 and beyond, is an imprecatory prayer. An imprecatory prayer means this. He's wanting somebody to God to do what? To get his enemies. I know we're nice Christian folk, and you've never asked God, get him. <laughs> I know I have. Oh, Lord, I pray some prayer. I've imprecated in my life. To imprecate means to do what? Im- imprecate to do what? To involve evil or upon another person, one's enemies. David was the best. 
using imprecatory language in Psalm 55, but Medea said it best. I don't know if you're familiar with Medea. Medea said, I know vengeance is mine, said the Lord, but he take too long. <laughs> Lord, hurt him, Lord. I'm tired of being... That's what he was saying. But to impre- imp- imprecate, Jeremiah teaches us that what? We are going to go to the source in the midst of our pain because why? God's faithfulness changes us. I'm trying to get to a close. God's faithfulness is enough for us. God's strength is behind us. His concern, his love is within us, and his arms beneath us are more sufficient for the job ahead of us, according to a person. So God, we go through our lamenting, and God's faithfulness sustains us. It sustains us. It holds us up in the midst of our trouble. And yes, we have trouble. It sustains us. It becomes the backbone through prayer and through meditation and through reading and through hanging out here so that we walk in the door and we're frustrated and we're down. Somebody comes to us and says, I love you. Straighten up a little more. Sustains us. It keeps us along the journey that I could go from one funeral to another funeral to a corner and then back here to encourage others. Why? Because on last night, I had to take some time and talk to God. Say, Lord, I need you. I'm drained. Because I stand here and I try to give it all every Sunday. I try to leave it here, as we say. Because there are people here, and we are live this morning on Instagram. There are people on Instagram that are hurting. Jeremiah stresses the nature of suffering, the character of God, the way to think through implications of suffering in relation to God's character, and the way to pray after the suffering has been mentally, spiritually, physically, and emotionally digested. I close. From the sermon, Why Praise the Lord, delivered in Detroit, Michigan by Reverend Dr. Charles Adams. He stated, on television, there was recently reported a featured story about a poor woman who saved enough money to purchase herself a home in Silicon Valley. She loved her new home. She kept the inside clean and even mowed the grass. In an effort to get unwanted people out of the neighborhood, the neighborhood association, you got to love them, got together with the local bank and established a law that allowed a home to be foreclosed on if the owner did not pay their association dues on time. For some reason or another, the lady did not pay her dues, $200. As a result, the bank foreclosed on her house and sold her house, which was worth $100,000. They sold it for $10,000 to two unscrupulous lawyers. The new owners threw her stuff outside in the street and the windows and she became homeless and had no place to go. Though she was homeless, the news stated that the woman showed up in church that Sunday praising God. She danced up a storm. She danced so until her dancing disturbed the minds of nine brilliant lawyers. The lawyers took her calls to court and they got her property restored. Whatever the situation, Dr. Adams says, when you can't do anything else, praise God. When you can't do nothing but cry or sit alone in your house or not be able to talk to nobody, sit with God. When everything seems like it's falling apart, when you're losing your mind and it feels like nothing is going wrong, right, sit with God. When you think that you can't make it by you, when you think that you can't do it anymore, sit with the Lord. Then as we go down this road and this journey together, we will be stronger together, loving together, and being closer together. Why? Because we are being sustained. Yes, I'm the pastor, but I get weak sometimes. But together, we can be as strong as nine yards of garlic together. Yes, lift your weary head and be strong. The song says it may not come when we want him, 
but he'll be there right on time. Be there right in the form of an encouraging word. Be there in the form of a community of faith. Be there in the form of a person lending a hand to pull us up and out of the pits of despair, depression, and dismay. So this morning I say to you as I conclude this series, lift your head. And I lift mine. And together, we're going to all drown. Because every time it rains, my head going to be like this. Looking to the hills and saying, it's because of God I'm still standing.
way home and I am officially tired. We have a meeting right after the council meeting, right after worship. And I pray this morning that you are educated, encouraged, and inspired. So that when life shows up today and tomorrow, we'll raise our heads instead of walking down like this. If you've been around a while, then you know that everything changes. And for that, I'm grateful. Mm, snacks, okay, I forgot. We have snacks in the back. Oh, I tell you. In seminary, they don't teach you all this other stuff. They so we got snacks in the back. Uh, don't trip over our kid corner, please. Don't be like a church that tripped in the parking lot and then sued the church. And won. <laughs> that was $30,000 out the window. People something else. So I hope something was said today. I want to thank our musicians this morning. I don't know about you, but not every church is blessed <laughs> with all this musical talent and educated music folks that will help us continue to work on our choir, which we're having a meeting on the end of the month. But with all being said, if there's nothing else, to our young people and our young people, we pray for you to have an outstanding year. And one day, if somebody's bullying you, me and Daddy are going to show up together. And we're just going to stand in the lunchroom. Do this. Then we're going to walk out and see you later, Adam. You in a gang called Community of Faith. We love you. I did that sometime with a little young man I was when I was a house parent, I went to school with him and sat down and ate with him. And it didn't bother him no more. I don't know why. <laughs> anyway, all heads bowed, all eyes closed. Irene and Jennifer, thank you so much for being here. I emailed Irene and I uh, emailed uh, Jennifer too, but something happened on the email. It, did, it said mailer or something. Anyway, maybe I put it in wrong. But when, when, I, when, pe when I don't see people, or once again, I, I, I get freaked out. I say, okay, did I say something? No, I didn't say anything. So I want to make sure because this is a safe space. And every, every, I'm going to give you permission. If I say something that, that offends you or hurts you face to face, sit down. And I say, okay, my bad. Okay, now up here, I'm going to run them folk crazy in the world. I'm going to comfort us. I'm going to run them evil folk crazy. I don't apologize for that. No way, Jose. <laughs> Anyway, all heads bowed, all eyes closed. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly, be in all that we ask or think, according to the power that works within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus, all generations, forever and ever. And we say together as a family, amen and amen. Hug somebody before you go, fist bump or whatever, because you never know who will come this way again. Let's make sure we smother Susie with love. <laughs> 